hard part about my job is that an apologist can present a demonstrably bad argument in five minutes and have it sound convincing. To refute it decisively will take me upwards of an hour, and if I simplify the response, it leaves them with some easy replies which lets them look good in the debate. But since quick replies are important, I'm going to distill my Countering the Kalam series into five minutes. Premise 1. The problem here is that begins to exist has a complex, specific meaning that Dr. Craig admits to, and it states two problematic things. First is that you agree to the tens to eight theory of time, which is a controversial and unscientific position we'll talk about later. Second is that something can exist timelessly, which means that it's changeless. And by changeless, I mean can't move, can't have different mental states, can't even think. The next thing that's problematic is cause, because Dr. Craig necessarily breaks it up into two types, an efficient cause and a material cause. In his argument, Dr. Craig wants to have creation with only an efficient cause, but not a material cause. The problem for him is that his justification for premise one is based on two things. The first is intuition and common experience. The problem is that these two things only show us causes that have a material and an efficient cause, or only a material cause. We never see causation with only an efficient cause. The second thing that his argument is based on is the argument that something can't come from nothing, where nothing is defined as the absence of anything. The problem here is that while we can agree with this argument, the issue is that when you define nothing like that, we're not even sure it can exist. Dr. Craig doesn't even believe that, since his God always exists. On the other hand, science defines nothing as the quantum vacuum, which we know creates things all the time. So premise one has got a lot of problems. Premise two, the universe began to exist. The first problem here is that Dr. Craig defines universe as all of material reality, including space and time itself. Science, on the other hand, defines our universe as a space-time manifold, which admittedly to exist takes a lot of merit in science, but we've got lots of evidence to back it up. You can verify this for yourself. Now, to prove premise two, Dr. Craig admits he must show that all of material reality had an absolute beginning and was preceded by nothing. Philosophically, Dr. Craig tries to do this by trying to argue against the past being infinite, saying infinites may not be logically impossible, but they're metaphysically absurd. The problem is that metaphysical absurdity is a subjective opinion made by individual philosophers. If you look at Dr. Craig's solution for the universe, then he relies on timeless causation, or something changeless affecting a change. When pushed on how such a thing could be possible by John Mackey, Dr. Craig replies that it's mysterious but not incoherent. That sounds pretty metaphysically absurd if you ask me. This is the problem when dealing with the creation of the universe in philosophy. You're left picking between different counterintuitive notions. After the philosophy part, Dr. Craig switches gears to science. The first thing he does is point to the Big Bang Singularity Theory, which is different from the regular old Big Bang Theory. Modern science rejects the idea that an actual singularity exists because the singularity theory requires that general relativity holds, or even down at the subatomic Planck scale. Problem is, we know that it doesn't actually do that because we can't understand grav quantum gravity yet, and that interferes with the laws of relativity. And whenever we do account for quantum gravity, we don't actually get singularities. As a matter of fact, Dr. Craig doesn't even believe in the existence of a singularity, since if it did exist, it would mean an actual infinite existed. The next thing that Dr. Craig points to is the bord guth vilenkin theorem to supposedly show our space-time had an absolute beginning. Problem here is that the theorem only says our space-time universe had an absolute beginning to its expansion. The scientists involved don't believe in a god, which is a good sign that there's something more that Dr. Craig doesn't let on about. The scientists here endorse the quantum nucleation theory popularized by people like Lawrence Krauss. It's compatible with the BVG theorem, and it only assumes that some form of quantum energy always existed, and it's quite possible that our space-time universe can come from that alone. So, based on this, premise two is not established. So while the Kalam is invalid on its own merits, I want to highlight how the argument is unscientific and circular. First off, the Kalam requires this tensed or a theory of time, and it requires that events possibly be absolutely simultaneous. Dr. Craig admits both of these things are required by the argument. The problem here is that special and general relativity both show that these things are wrong. To get around this, Dr. Craig inter endorses an interpretation of special relativity called the Neil Lorentzian view. This layers on an undetectable and unfalsifiable reference frame to special relativity and rejects the idea of space-time as a four-dimensional manifold. The problem for Dr. Craig is that we have theoretical evidence that this isn't the case in the laws of electromagnetism, and we have solid experimental evidence in the form of time dilation and length contraction that supports the normal four-dimensional interpretation. Plus, his theory is unfalsifiable. You can always layer on that kind of conjecture to any scientific theory to get whatever results you wanted. This is unscientific thinking, and I'm going to leave that up to you to decide whether that's a good or a bad thing. 
So finally, how does Dr. Craig justify taking the Neo Lorentzian view? He admits that you can accept this more complex theory because otherwise you're stuck with the tenseless theory of time, which is theologically objectionable, and that as Christians they already believe in a creator God in an atheoretic time, which means that the Neo Lorentzian view must be true. So we can believe in this unprovable scientific theory because we believe in a creator God creating the universe out of nothing, which we need this theory so that we can use the Kalam argument to prove the existence of a God that created the universe out of nothing. Remember folks, circular reasoning works because circular reasoning works.